Welcome back to the crossover on this beautiful Friday, the 12th of January, which is actually the birthday of John Hancock himself. Shout out John Hancock and that beautiful, beautiful signature that would live on in history forever. And let's start off with a new piece of history. A new era in college football. Nick Saban is gone, but we're living in the NIL era. And the biggest sports story of the day is that FSU, Florida State University, has been handed a two-year probation for violating NIL rules. So obviously this new era of college football where players are getting paid for the name, image, and likeness. And I personally am for the players getting paid. I mean, the colleges are making so much. The NCAA is making so much off of the back of these players. So I am 100% all for players making their money. However, I feel like there's a lot of little minutia that needs to be worked out in this NIL. And I feel like the NCAA is kind of abusing their power. Now, there's been talks in the past about when when uh, players can transfer, when they can't transfer, how the NCAA has the ultimate say and basically controls these guys' career, these guys' life, these guys' future. And how sometimes the NCAA is overstepping. And I feel like this is another key, key moment where the NCAA is overstepping and trying their best to use their power in a way that they shouldn't be. Now, NIL in itself, we still got to figure out, all right? There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of laws in place where you got to make sure that the players aren't getting screwed over. You got to make sure that the schools aren't overstepping and trying to do something extra with this NIL. And I feel like this is all part of the reason that Nick Saban decided to retire now as opposed to a year ago two years ago. This is a brand new challenge for college football in itself. Now these players are making money and obviously some schools will provide more of an opportunity for players to make more money. And obviously we all know that money makes the world go round and especially in sports. At the end of the day, it is still a business. But just like in professional sports, if you go to a big market, let's say New York or LA, you're going to have a lot more marketability. You're going to have a lot more ways to make money off of the field and when NFL players are recruiting players from other teams or even out of the draft that kind of plays a role into the decision that these players are going to make because at the end of the day yes I'm sure they love the sport I love I'm sure that they love the game they grew up on it but this is their career and they're trying to set themselves and their families up in the best position possible Matt Rule himself Nebraska head coach came out like what, a month, two ago, not maybe not even that long, and literally said, if you need a good quarterback in these transfer windows, it's going to cost you $1.5 million. This is the new reality that we're living in with college football. So now what happened with Florida State? So I guess that there's a law in NIL that says that coaches can't directly put the players in contact with a potential deal, with a potential offer from NIL. I guess they can't market their NIL possibilities if you come to their school. Well, all along, colleges haven't been marketing their professors to these players. They haven't been marketing their their strong academics. They're marketing a football program that's going to get them ready for the NFL, that's going to hopefully get them as a first-round pick so that they can make the most money. So at the end of the day, regardless, these schools have still been selling a dream of, listen, come here, play for us, we'll get you in a better position, you'll be in the first round, second round, you'll be a higher draft pick, you'll make more money. So I don't really understand what the issue with this whole promoting your NIL possibilities to the players, I don't get it. I mean, do you think Florida State is the only place doing this? Why do you think Arch Manning is playing at Texas and not at some other school with a bigger name or or, or a more accredited program of recent history? Texas themselves talk about how, or even Texas former players, I guess the school can't say anything about it, say, oh my God, the boosters at Texas, we all know that the boosters at Texas have a lot more money, therefore we're set up very well for NIL possibilities for anybody coming in. Now what happened at Florida State, there was a recruit that came into town, an assistant coach drove him in his car, so it was the assistant coach and the player, drove him to a car, uh, drove him in his car to have a meeting with a possible NIL deal that the, that the player could have that was going to pay them $15,000 a month in his first season at FSU. The player still ended up going with Georgia, but then I guess that there was a, an investigation and the assistant coach 
provided misleading information or false information. And now we're at a point where the assistant uh, the assistant coach is going to get some sort of punishment levied upon him. And FSU is now on a two-year probation. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that you can't provide any NIL? Because in the age of NIL, any player that goes to FSU has to forego all their money. Well, nobody's going to want to go there. Does it mean that you can't recruit? Because if you can't recruit, how are you going to have a program? I'm not completely sure what this probation means. I'm not sure how they're going to go about enforcing this probation. But what I do know is that, listen, if Florida State can't provide any of this, there's going to be no players. The team's not going to be that good. And to me, there's other schools out there doing the same exact thing, promoting their NIL, promoting all the possible opportunities that these kids can have if they come to their school. However, the NCAA has decided to go against FSU. And now what has FSU done recently? Well, they spoke out against the NCAA over the whole scandal of them not being in the college football playoff, even though winning a uh, win- winning their conference and being undefeated. It just seems like, okay, you want to come at the NCAA? Well, guess what? Now the NCAA is going to find something to come at you for, the school, and now you're going to be irrelevant for two years. It just seems like an extreme abuse of power by the NCAA. It doesn't seem right. FSU already got robbed of potential earnings and of potential eyes watching the college football playoffs do you know how many recruits high school kids were watching that college football playoff do you know how many not even non-football players end up applying to these schools that get that get into the college football playoff just because they see the school i'm sure washington's applications went up i'm sure that applications to texas went up after that even though they lost So FSU lost a lot not going to the college football playoff, and now the NCAA is punishing them because the FSU came out and was trying to sue the NCAA. So it just seems like a very, very messy situation. More likely than not, I see Norvell leaving FSU because why would he want to be there if he's not going to be able to build a program for two years? And now with the Bama uh, coach opening up, the coaching uh, position opening up at Bama, I see Mike Norvell going there. And honestly, he's a good coach. Bama, great program. Mike Norvell can do great at Bama. I just hope that he gets out because, uh, honestly, this year was extremely depressing for them, losing Jordan Travis. And now with this super, super unfortunate situation, and I think a gross, gross abuse of power by the NCAA. But a uh, head coach that we do know will be somewhere new next year is Jared Mayo, as he is now the head coach for the New England Patriots. Everybody kind of saw this coming. Apparently there was a succession clause in the contract saying that once Bill left, it would be Gerard Mayo that would be coming in. I think I said Jared, it's Gerard Mayo. Um, I would have liked to see Rabel. I know a lot of fans would have liked to see Rabel, but I also don't hate this pick. Gerard Mayo obviously played uh, from 2008 to 2015 with the Patriots, won a Super Bowl there. He was a linebacker there. So obviously he knows the program very well. He then also came back in 2019 and between 2019 and now he's been the linebacker coach for the New England Patriots. So a Patriot for life, somebody from inside the facility, somebody that has seen what it takes to win, somebody that has seen Bill Belichick go through the motions and how to coach a team well. They're still out of GM spot, so it should be interesting to see what's going to happen there with the GM. Now, once they get a GM and they get Gerard Mayo, I also really, really, really like the fact that they went out and the next day, hey, listen, Gerard Mayo's our guy. We don't want to be too long without knowing who who's our guy. So everybody knows Gerard Mayo is the guy. Now let's get him a GM. Let's find him what quarterback he wants to go get in the draft. And I'm extremely, extremely, extremely excited. Looking forward to this new Patriots era. Now talking about what else happened yesterday, we had Barcelona beat Osasuna 2-0, kind of expected. Lewandowski got on the score sheet. He hasn't been getting on the score sheet that much as of late. And Yamal also got on the score sheet. So Sunday, we've got an El Clasico in the final of the Spanish Super Cup in Saudi Arabia. So that was expected. Uh, Juve also made quick work of Frosinone. I still haven't learned how to say that name. Uh, 4-0 was the end result. They went up in the 11th minute. Never really looked back. Uh, Sets up a semifinal with Lazio, but that's not until April. But the story of yesterday for me at least, was Weston McKinney, absolute baller, two beautiful assists, I cannot wait to see McKinney and the U.S. men's national team play, uh, and I also love that he's pissing off the Italians, alright, he was coming out, he was saying that he eats 
pasta with pesto and tomato and chicken all in the same bowl and to me that seems perfectly normal seems like a perfectly normal pasta bowl but i guess that's like against their religion in italy so i love that he's coming out and pissing them off bringing a little bit of america into italy in the nba last night we had the night of the blowout as the Cavs beat the nets this is uh the closest game no, nope. second closest game that we had last night. This game was the game that happened in Paris. And obviously the biggest thing coming out of it was Tristan Thompson got into a little bit of a kerfuffle there at the end of the game. But I absolutely love this Paris game. I think it was a great success. We saw David Beckham. We saw uh, R9. We saw Mbappe. A lot of star power out in Paris. I think it's a great way to, to grow the game. I think it'll influence a lot of French kids growing up now that can see these guys coming into their backyard and playing uh i think it'll influence them to uh to to, to pursue basketball as well obviously they've got rudy gobert and webinyama so obviously they've got their two big stars i would have liked to seen webinyama go out there i don't know if there's another game plan but uh yeah great success there by the nba i love everything that adam silver is doing from the in-season tournament to these paris games absolutely love it the blazers lost by 62 points versus the thunder in a game where the blazers only had 50 something points in the third quarter so absolute blowout there the bucks destroyed the celtics so hard that the celtics starters actually came out after halftime and they were benched so uh another blowout there i was not expecting that one i said yesterday in yesterday's video that the celtics would win but it wasn't in boston so maybe the celtics are the cowboys and they can only win at home uh, and I think it's good for the Bucks because the noise was getting kind of loud. Everybody was talking about, oh my God, are the Bucks actually the real deal? Are they not? But uh, big, uh, big way to prove themselves last night. Uh, the Mavs, the Mavs were blowing out the Knicks yesterday. I said in yesterday's video that I think it would be close, but without Luka, the Mavs wouldn't be able to do it. However, the Knicks come all the way back, and there's a minute left in the game, and they're down one point. But for some reason, one of the weirdest things. The Knicks just couldn't get a rebound in that final minute. I, I mean, I think there was a possession. One possession that turned into like five different possessions because the Mavs kept missing. And had the Knicks just grabbed that rebound, down one, gone down, scored even just a two-pointer, then maybe we could have had a little something and the Knicks could have completed the comeback. But they didn't because they couldn't get a rebound. And then with the final game of the night, we had the Suns beat the Lakers and it was not close. I mean... I thought it was going to be a lot closer, but it wasn't. LeBron had 10 points. AD had 10 points. Reeves had 10 points. Reddish, which was questionable, played 8 minutes, got 0 points, 0 assists, 0 rebounds. But Beal absolutely balling out. Ball, ball, absolutely balling out. Like I said, I love it. I think that the Suns are coming into themselves, and uh, I, I, I think that they have a lot to prove, and they have a lot still left to do here this season. Now, I did say that I would give predictions for Wild Card Weekend today because Wild Card Weekend starts tomorrow in the NFL. I'm super excited for that. But I'm going to do you one better. We're about to do a full NFL playoff bracket. So let's go. Go. We've got the full NFL bracket for the whole playoffs. Uh, and we're going to start here with the Wild Card. Obviously, we got the Browns versus the Texans in Houston playoff. Football is back in Houston. I love the story with D'Amico Ryan. I love the story with CJ Stroud. I know rookie head coach and rookie quarterback. Obviously, on the other side, we've got Joe Flacco, who's got a lot of playoff experience, a lot of stuff going for him. But I don't know. I just feel like Houston is going to be rocking. Can you imagine J.J. Watt's surprise appearance just runs out the tunnel and lines up for this Houston Texans team? I'm assuming that J.J. Watt is going to be there. However, the Browns' defense is extremely good. The Browns have been... Just finding ways to win games this year. And I, I would love to go with the Texans. I really would. But I think I'm, I'm going to have to go Browns. I think the Browns experience and that defense is just going to be a little bit too much. CJ Stroud, is the moment going to get a little bit too big? I don't think so. I saw him on the Pat McAfee show. He looked great. This is probably the toughest decision for me. But I, but I do think that the Browns and Joe Flacco will be able to do it. Then we've got the Chiefs versus the Dolphins. In Arrowhead, so Tyreek Hill going back to Kansas City for a playoff game. And I mean, Mahomes at home in a playoff game. In a game that's going to be negative 20 degrees. We've talked about all year how the Dolphins can't win against teams with winning records. And with the cold and with all else, I do expect Tyreek Hill to go off. Kind of a little revenge game in the playoffs. And I do think that the drops and the kind of lack of confidence from the Chiefs is going to come back to bite them. Should be interesting to see if Cardarius Tony is going to be on the field or not. Uh, but I'm going to go Chiefs still. I, I, Especially with the conditions, with everything going on, 
I don't think that they're going to be able to do it. Uh, then we've got the Bills versus the Steelers, and the Steelers with Mason Rudolph. I mean, I, I think that they're just happy to be here. Again, we talked about in yesterday's video, is Mike Tomlin the next coach that's going to be getting put out in the NFL? I sure hope not, but I'm going to go Bills. And the, the reason I went to Chiefs as well is because I want this matchup right here. I want the Bills Chiefs in Buffalo. But now let's go on to the NFC side where we got... Bucks and Eagles. Now, the Eagles have obviously been struggling. There has been a little bit of rumbling as of late, also starting about Nick Sirianni, whether or not he will be back next year. After seeing the Eagles, all right, I think the Giants could have beat them the first game that we played them. We beat them the second game that we played them. Jalen Hurts broke his finger. We've got a couple of key pieces missing as well. And, and uh, Slim Reaper, I forget his uh, actual name, Devontae Smith, Devontae Smith was dealing with, with a little something, AJ Brown was dealing with a little something, Jason Kelsey seems upset, now this can either go one of two ways, either they're going to just bounce back, they're going to come back as a team and bounce back, or it's going to be that same Eagles just trying to win an ugly game at the end, just trying to ride that tush push all the way to the Super Bowl, and then on the other side, we've got a Buccaneers defense that I feel is kind of over underrated this year, and we've got Baker Mayfield who's playing his great football and for the Bucks in Tampa, I'm going to go with the Buccaneers. I'm going to go with the Buccaneers upsetting the Eagles. I know a lot of people probably disagree, and I could see the Eagles easily winning that, but I'm going to go Buccaneers for now. Then we've got the Lions and the Rams, and we've got Matt Stafford going back to Detroit, a place where he put his heart and soul trying to win a Super Bowl for that city for so long, and now he could be the first step to either doing it or breaking their heart again. I think that the Rams are also an extremely good team. However, I think the Lions, again, a little bit lack of experience here as well. However, I'm going to go with the lack of experience. I think that Motor City Dan Campbell is going to have the boys pumped. He's going to have the boys fired up. And I think that he's going to be able to get the boys to beat the Rams. Beating Matt Stafford. Jared Goff revenge game against the Rams. Is Jared Goff going to go off? I think that the Lions are going to be able to pull this one out. And then we've got the Cowboys and the Packers. Now, the Packers' defense all year has not been great. They have, quote-unquote, rookie quarterback in, in uh, Love. What's his first name? Love. You get what I'm saying. However, all of the pressure is on the Cowboys. At home, all the expectations. Mike McCarthy, could he be on the chopping block? If the Cowboys don't win a Super Bowl, that's how high the expectations are. We've got Dak Prescott. How is he going to show up? I I want to go Packers. I want the Packers to win this game. But I think that the Cowboys will be able to squeeze this one out, especially because they are playing in AT&T Stadium where they have been so good. But I could see the Packers upsetting them. I could see the Packers upsetting them. I think the defense is going to let them down a little bit. But the Packers, listen, they're playing with house money. Now let's go into the next round where we've got Browns versus the Ravens in Baltimore. I'm going to go with the Ravens. I don't think that the Browns are going to be able to be enough for the Ravens. Obviously, they've already played this year. The Ravens. Then we've got Bills versus Chiefs. Oh, and I forgot to mention this Bills-Steelers game. Yeah, 10 inches of snow. Bills versus Chiefs. Now, this is a matchup that kind of brought these two onto the, on, on, onto the scene. Well, not brought them onto the scene, but kind of solidified that this was going to be the, the, the rivalry for years going forward. Obviously, they've kind of gone two different ways. The Bills are the hottest team in the NFL right now, starting 6-6 six and six and making it all the way to the second seed in the AFC. Wild story there. And I think that with new overtime rules, with new everything in Buffalo, the Bills will be able to squeeze out the Chiefs and finally beat that team that's been on their back for so long. Now let's go 49ers versus the Bucks, And I think the 49ers are a complete team. So I'm going to go 49ers beating the Bucks. This game, again, will be interesting. Lions versus the Cowboys, or even maybe the Rams versus the Cowboys, or even maybe the Lions versus the Packers. I don't know. But I think that the Lions will get their first playoff win in a while, but they won't be able to get their second. I've got the Cowboys going to the NFC Championship. And now let's go with the AFC Championship, where we got the Bills versus the Ravens. And I think that the Ravens playing at home. I'm going to go Ravens. Cowboys and the 49ers. I think this is where the Cowboys fall. And I think that it's going to be 49ers. And then we talked about it. We saw that Ravens 49ers game. Everybody was hyping it up as the Super Bowl preview. I said it myself that this would be a Super Bowl preview. And like I said in my 2024 Champions video, where I already predicted Michigan to win the college football playoffs, the Ravens 
be our Super Bowl champions this year. And I'm excited for it. Come on, Lamar. Give him the MVP. Great story. So that's my bracket. Let me know if you agree. If you don't agree, like I said in the 2024 champions video, I think that the Ravens, only they can stop themselves. But let's go with the slate of the day, which is what we have for the rest of the day here. We have the start of the Asian Cup, and the first game is Qatar versus Lebanon. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't really watch the Asian Cup. AFCON starts tomorrow as well, so I might not be the most informed when making these, uh, when making these decisions because I don't really know these teams. But Qatar is the host. They lost their first game against Ecuador in the World Cup. I think they'll be able to win it today. Uh, in the Prem today, we've got Burnley versus Luton. And I honestly think this is going to be a tie. But if it isn't a tie, I think Luton can beat Burnley. And I hope it happens. Just sticking with uh, Prem tomorrow. These games are a little bit earlier. So, so my next video tomorrow won't come out until after these games are played. We've got Chelsea versus Fulham where I could see another tie. But I think that Chelsea will come out strong after that Middlesbrough game. And they'll be able to get it done against Fulham. Also with Chelsea, I guess Nkunku got injured again. Super, super, super sad to see, but uh, we'll see what happens there. Then we've got Newcastle versus City, which are two of the teams in the Prem that actually lost absolutely no players uh, between AFCON and the Asian Cup. So those two teams are at full strength, and I think that uh, I think that City is going to be able to take it, and I think that City is going to stay hot on Liverpool's heels in the Premier League. Tonight in the NBA, we've got a whole bunch of games, but I've got four that I'm most excited for. We've got the Sixers versus the Kings. Both teams sitting at 23 wins for the Sixers. This is the third game without Joel Embiid. They've been struggling without Embiid. They've lost three straight. Uh, and I think that the Sixers are going to find a way to win this game. You see the Jimmy Butler jersey back there. It is a Sixers jersey. Uh, I think that the Sixers are going to find a way to come out tonight in Philadelphia and figure this one out. Or actually... It might not be in Philadelphia. Don't quote me on that. Blazers versus the Wolves. And this game is only on here because, hey, Blazers, wake up. Can we score some points today, please? Now, I think that the Wolves are going to be way too strong for them. Uh, Wolves, obviously, still the number one team. Then we've got the fight for Florida between the Magic and the Heat. Both teams with the exact same record, 21 and 16. Uh, this game is down in Miami, and I don't know. I'm, I'm just really inspired by this Magic team right now. I think that this Magic team is going to be able to do it. And then the final game that I'm looking forward to is the Pelicans versus the Nuggets. Can the Pelicans repeat what they did against the Warriors, but this time against the Nuggets? This has been today's crossover. You guys let me know. Wild Card Weekend, what picks you guys got? Who do you guys got going? Uh, let me know about the bracket. Let me know about FSU. Let me know about everything. And as always, have a great weekend. Have a beautiful night. I will be back tomorrow. We're out of here. Peace.